my name is Lisa Turbett and I live in Burlington, Ontario in Canada. I'm a school teacher and I work as a teacher librarian at a school named after Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield. But long before I started teaching, I got started in baseball quite by accident. My younger brother was playing t-ball, coached by my father, and there was no umpire at the game. And the parents were in quite a dilemma. How were we going to have this game happen if there was no umpire? And my father volunteered me. And the rest, as you say, is history. Uh, I umpired the rest of that season and was only 11 years old. And that was sort of a time where most people didn't believe girls could be umpires. I hadn't heard of any other women being umpires. I hadn't met any. There weren't any umpires at that time umpiring professionally that I knew about. And um, after that day, I never really looked back. So what I actually do in baseball as an umpire takes on many different forms. So there's the umpiring part, there's the supervision part, there's the instructor part, and then the part when I work as a director. So as an umpire in Canada, um, that day, 40 years ago, when I umpired that t-ball game, I progressed up to the Baseball Canada ranks and got involved in the Canadian National Program. I did a number of Canadian National Championships, uh, all the way up to our senior men's category a number of times. And I also started to train as a supervisor and I began to supervise Baseball Canada Championships here. I was also involved as an instructor in Ontario and teaching umpiring to uh, people around the province. I then became an instructor teaching instructors how to train and certify umpires across uh, not only Ontario, but across Canada. In 1998, I became a member of Baseball Ontario's Umpire Committee, and I had a chance to work with other umpires across the province. And for me, it was a great opportunity to use my educational background and experience as a teacher to help in the creation and development of our curriculum materials that we use in our instructional clinics to train and certify umpires across the province. So this was an amazing opportunity and I loved being a part of it and I still am today. And uh, this implementation and development of young umpires across the province is something that I'm really uh, passionate about and I love being a part of it. In 2004, my umpiring in Canada changed. I was selected to umpire in the very first Women's World Cup of Baseball in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And it was an amazing experience working with other international umpires from around the world, something that I never thought that I would have an opportunity to do. It was an amazing experience. And um, at that tournament, I ended up being selected to umpire the plate for the gold medal game, uh, an honor that I'm very proud of. And um, it was very exciting to be a part of that very first Women's World Cup. Um, after that opportunity in 2006, I was selected again However, this time I got to travel to Taiwan and I had never been there before and had an opportunity to umpire in the second Women's World Cup. Um, overall, I umpired in three Women's World Cups and uh, it was an amazing experience. And as I said, something that I never thought would happen um, when I was a young umpire. And if I could go back and tell my young self, I would have said dream big because there's some opportunities that are gonna happen for you in the future. But I had really no idea what was ahead. Um, after that time of umpiring internationally, I did some other activities, some, some friendship series. I got to train with major league umpires uh, when Canada went to the United States and myself and some other women umpires had the opportunity to work and train with major league umpires, which really helped to develop all of our skills and experience and to learn. It was an amazing opportunity. And shortly after this time, I was approached by WBSC for an opportunity to join the WBSC Baseball Umpiring Commission. And that is something that I'm truly uh, passionate about, being a part of the commission. Um, I get to help with instruction, which is something that I do here in Ontario and in Canada. Um, but in addition to the instruction and creating um, teaching materials for our clinics, I also get the opportunity to work as the umpire director for international tournaments. So in 2016, Instead of umpiring at the Women's World Cup, I became the first woman umpire director. And it was in South Korea, it was an amazing experience. And um, something that was a little bit different from that, the last two World Cups compared to my first World Cup is there was an opposite of men to women umpires. In my very first World Cup, there was only three women umpires 
and the rest were men. And in the last two Women's World Cup, it was the opposite. There was only three male umpires and all of the rest were women umpires. So getting the opportunity to supervise, the opportunity to be a director at an international tournament or to instruct at an international WBSC camp is um, a, a great part of my umpiring career. It's just a little different aspect because now I'm working with other umpires and sharing my experience and helping them achieve their goals. Being an umpire is challenging and certainly along the way I've had some challenges and some difficulties and some obstacles to overcome. If I go back to that young umpire after that season of umpiring t-ball, uh, the next year I went to attend the higher level certification. Uh, this would allow me to umpire uh, baseball with pitching and not just the t-ball and to allow me some opportunities to umpire different city, uh, city games and city leagues. Um, however, when I went to the clinic, um, they actually told me that I had to go home. And so my dad had driven me all the way there. And then when I got there, I was all excited. And they said, I'm sorry, you have to go home. We don't think that you're the right age. And maybe that was the case. However, there were other boys in the class that I knew were my age and a couple even younger. And needless to say, on the drive home, I was extremely disappointed. And, um, you know, I continued to umpire t-ball for the next season and some local house league. And I went back the next year and I said, okay, this year I'm gonna take the higher level training and I'm gonna be able to do this uh, higher level baseball. And once again, they sent me home. And on the drive home, it was a long drive home. Um, I was extremely disappointed. And as I said, there weren't other women umpiring at that time um, or other examples of this. And everyone thought that they were doing what was best. You know, I was gonna get picked on, I was gonna get teased, I was gonna get bullied, and it was gonna be hard. And, um, and it was hard, but I think that their thought that I shouldn't do it because it was gonna be hard was a mistake. Um, because certainly I'm still doing it now and certainly that challenge and that difficulty I was able to overcome and umpiring baseball has been one of the greatest uh, parts of my life and um, trying to overcome that obstacle when I was a kid uh, was a big challenge. For the third time the next year my dad drove me back to that class and I told them I wasn't going to leave I was going to stay and get that training and I stayed and uh, again had the opportunity to umpire level baseball, to work with different umpires. But I often wonder what would have happened, not only the first time or the second time, what if I had stayed home and not went back? Uh, think of all the things that I would have missed out on between then and now, had I went home and stayed home and didn't return. And I think about that a lot. And I think that that would be one of the biggest things that I learned from overcoming difficulties and challenging challenges is to not give up. And certainly I had not one, but two opportunities to give up and I didn't take them. I persevered and um, knew I wanted to be an umpire. I believed that I could be an umpire. I didn't really fully understand that this wasn't something for girls. I believed that I could do it. And I just persevered until I could get that training and continue to advance and uh, achieve higher levels from that point forward. So definitely that was one of the difficulties that I had was that initial uh, training and trying to get access to learning more um, advanced baseball skills, more advanced umpiring techniques. And that was definitely one of the challenges that I had and it was difficult to overcome, but I persevered and I did it. So what advice would I have to give to other officials and especially female officials? And that would definitely be to not give up and to persevere. And I have an interesting story specifically about this. Um, I was actually supervising at the women's Canadian Women's National Championship in Toronto. And um, there was women umpires, I was supervising um, women players, it was great. And um, a woman and her daughter come over and was watching and we got to chatting, she introduced herself. And she said that she umpired um, locally, um, but she couldn't umpire anymore because they weren't going to let her and her daughter. And they told her that they couldn't umpire because they were women umpires. And um, I was obviously busy uh, supervising the game. And once the game was done, I uh, arranged to meet and chat with her. And I said, what do you mean that they won't let you umpire? 
And she goes, yeah, we're going to quit because we don't have anywhere to umpire. And I said, you're not quitting. I said, we're going to find you somewhere else to umpire. You can't quit. Um, you, you have to persevere. And this brought me right back to being that kid who was sent home from the umpire clinic. I said, they don't get to decide when you quit. If you don't want to umpire anymore, that's okay. But they don't get to decide that you don't get to umpire. And I set her up with some contacts and she was able to um, umpire in a neighboring city and association. And um, it was interesting because a few late years later, um, at our uh, provincial super clinic, a woman come up to me and she said, do you remember me? And I said, yes, I do. And she told me the story about her and her daughter who went to the other city. They started umpiring. She got more involved. She was now attending the super clinic training. She then came to a couple of uh, training events, umpire events that we had in Ontario, Ontario Cup where she came. And um, this is so amazing. She then went on to become a board member of Baseball Ontario. And um, she, it, it was amazing. So, um, and one, the, one summer she went to Cooperstown and umpired in one of the Cooperstown tournaments that they have. And she was selected to do the plate in the gold medal game. And it was so exciting because we could watch her via the internet. And um, what an amazing opportunity. She's since gone on to become an instructor. So she's now an umpire uh, instructor. And much the same as my own story, she was back at that pivotal moment where she was gonna quit because they were giving her a hard time and she couldn't find a place to umpire. Parallels much my own story. Um, think of all these amazing things that not only was she missed doing, but all the people around her who benefited from her leadership and her experience now as an umpire would have missed out had she taken a different path at that time. So if I was giving any advice to any umpires, male or females, it's to persevere. And if people tell you that you can't do something or you're not good at something, that's okay. That's information to help create your plan. Okay, well, I'm gonna work on that. Or you can't umpire here, I'm gonna find somewhere else to umpire. I can't find the training, I can't do the training here, I'm gonna train somewhere else. So I really, really strongly suggest you need to persevere if you need help. You can ask you know, a colleague or some other umpires. Um, certainly you can contact WBSC because I'd be more than happy to help you if you needed help. Um, but really persevere and not let somebody else decide whether or not you're going to be an umpire. You decide that you want to be the umpire and you decide if you don't want to be anymore, don't let somebody else decide for you. In the 40 years since I first umpired that t-ball game, I've had a lot of opportunities to do different things. And a lot of them I've been the first. Um, the first to umpire a number of different championships within Canada, the first to be a female supervisor within Canada, internationally getting to umpire those first Women's World Cups um, and doing the gold medal game. Uh, when I was asked to join WBSC, um, I had a lot of firsts there too. Um, being on the Baseball Umpiring Commission, getting to supervise World Cups. Um, I've now supervised three WBSC World Cups, uh, the Women's World Cup, the U15 and the U12. In addition, I got to supervise the World University Games, which was amazing. Um, all of it was amazing. And um, I also had the opportunity to go with other international instructors from around the world to California for a WBSC umpire camp. And my role with WBSC, we also have had the opportunity to do some instructional materials, some videos, um, different things like that. All of this has been an amazing experience. Um, having the opportunity to work with WBSC and the Umpire Commission, um, doing baseball, umpiring baseball, being a director, being a supervisor, being an instructor for a sport that I love so much has been amazing. And um, I, I just, I can't say enough how, how lucky I am to have had this opportunity. And once again, to reiterate, had I gone back to my younger self, if I had given this up, um, a lot of these amazing opportunities ahead of me, I would have missed out on. Over the years, I've seen more girls and women becoming umpires. Um, but despite this shift towards inclusion for women in sport and as sports officials, there's still not enough global examples uh, that girls and women can take inspiration from. Uh, we have a very um, 
developmental girls tournament that takes place in Toronto and I go and umpire it each year. And the very first year that I went, the girls saw me and they said, I didn't know we were allowed to be the umpire. I want to be an umpire now too. And for me, this was really shocking that they never thought that they could be the umpire and that by my presence alone, that would give them permission that they too could be an umpire. And I go back to the tournament every year because I feel like them seeing me and other women umpires helps to give them that inspiration that they may not otherwise see. I realize that this is something that is maybe taking place around the rest of the world. We need some examples. We're starting to see more and more success for women, both as coaches, umpires, uh, players, all of it. And we can take inspiration from that, but we can always use more examples. I encourage young girls and women to take up umpiring, to seek out training, seek out opportunities. There's more opportunities now than there have ever been um, to take advantage of these opportunities and become an umpire. For me, umpiring has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. Filled with memories, led to lifelong friendships, and I've had the opportunity to create a baseball family from around the world. And it's something that I'm truly grateful for.